Hello everyone, and welcome to the third part of the PyCute Model View programming series. My name is Yasin and I'll be your instructor. Last time, we went through and learned how to create a model which holds a single dimensional data structure, or a list. We saw how models and views communicate with each other through the methods we used, such as row count, the method that allows the views to know how many items it needs to display, data, the method the views use when it wants to display something, set data, the methods the views use to submit data that we type in an editor while editing, header data, the methods that allow us to display something on the header of our views, flags, the method which allows the views to know how it should treat each item, such as if it should be enabled, if it should be editable, if it should be selectable, etc. You should now be able to understand how models and views work with each other to some degree. Alright, let's see what we'll be doing today. We're gonna extend on what we learned last time and implement inserting and removing of items to our list model. This is a very useful feature and you should learn it. Once we are done with that, we will go on and create our own table model, a two-dimensional data structure. Okay, let's start with implementing inserting and removing to our list model. Inserting is done by implementing the method called insert rows. Removing is done by implementing the method called remove rows. This is how the methods look like. The parameters we get for those methods are position where in the data structure we want to insert. We also get rows, how many rows we want to insert. Finally, we get a parameter called parent. As I said in the last tutorial, we will never care about the parent parameters until we actually implement hierarchical data structures for tree views, so we are safe to ignore the para parent parameter. But there's one thing we should note about these methods. An insert rows method must call begin insert rows before inserting any rows, like so. Begin insert rows. And it must call end insert rows immediately afterwards, like so. End insert rows. So we begin insert rows, we do the inserting here, and then we call end insert rows. The same goes for the remove rows method. You must call begin remove rows before removing any rows, like so. Begin remove rows. And then call end remove rows immediately afterwards. Those methods that we called emit a signal which is connected by the views so the views handle the data they display correctly or else the view might get out of sync when we insert new rows or remove rows resulting in an invalid state of the displayed data. Now that we have handled the communication with the view, let's do the real magic in between our begin insert rows and end insert rows. As said before, we have the position we want to insert at, which is passed to us by this parameter. We also have the amount of rows we want to insert. Basically, we need a loop that does this for us. So, for i in range rows, so this loop will insert an item for each row that's passed to us in the rows parameter. All, that, all that's left now is to use the insert function of our private colors list to insert the new color item. So self colors, that's our list, insert. The first parameter is the index we want to insert that, and that's our position. And the second one is the item we want to insert, and that's going to be a color, which is going to be black by default. Q 
hue color give the hex code of a black color. As you noticed, we always insert to the same position. And that's because whenever we insert something on an existing list, the current item at that index gets pushed down in the list. Since we insert at the same position, it keeps pushing those items downwards. Once we are done with that, all we have to do is return true from this method because the operation was successful. But there is one thing missing and that's the fact that we have to pass some parameters to our begin insert rows call. Yes, we have told the views using this model that we are about to change the data structure by calling this method. So they should be prepared to update themselves. But we haven't told where in the data structure we are going to change. So the begin insert rows take three parameters to assist the views with the updating. Those are index, first, and last. First and last are indices of where the view should update. All the items in between the first and last, including those two, are the items we are inserting and the views needs to know needs to know those indices so it can display the correct data this allows the views to know exactly where they need to update after the inserting operation has been executed the index parameter however is only needed when we work with hierarchical data structures so we are going to pass an empty q model index instance to it which will default it to the root so Qt core Q model index. So this will default it to the root. The first parameter is also easy. We just pass our position parameter because that's where the index is for our first item. But where is the last item? Well, it's quite easy as well, but a little bit more work is needed. We have our starting item, which is the position parameter. We also have the amount of item we want to insert, which is the rows parameter. So we just add those two together. Position plus rows. But since rows, this one, is not an index, but a count, we have to take minus one because the views expect a zero based index for the last item minus one now that we are done we can try inserting some items and run this application let's go to the bottom of our code and use the insert rows method let's insert five items to index zero model insert rows at zero index we're gonna insert five items. We also have to pass an empty Q model index instance to our parent parameter. So cute core Q model index. Now that we have passed an empty Q model index instance to our parent parameter, we can run this application and watch what happens. The table view the combo box, the tree view, and the list view. As you can see, five black colors has been inserted because we inserted those to index zero. They have pushed our other colors downwards. Now let's insert at index two and rerun the application. Now you can see that the red item is at the top, the green item is also at the top, and then comes our five black items, and then finally the blue, uh, the blue item. And that's because we inserted at index 2. This is index 0, this is index 1, and here is 2.
Let's quickly finish the remove rows method. It's almost the same thing, only the operation is different. But before that, I'm gonna default the parent parameter to an empty queue model index instance, so we don't have to supply it manually like we do here. So I remove that and then set the parent parameter to an empty queue model index so we can use it here as well. Now, let's make the removes row method now. Just gonna default this one to an empty queue model index as well. For i in range rows, we get the value from our colors list by using the position passed to us. And then we call the remove method of our internal list and pass the value to us. And finally we return true. We also have to pass the exact same values to begin remove rows. Now our remove rows method is done. You can see that it's the it's exactly the same thing, only the operation is different. Now, let's remove those inserted rows. So we should get red, green and blue. And if we do that, if we get red, green and blue, that means our implementation was successful. And that's exactly what we get on all our views. And we can still edit the items. So now we have implemented remove rows and insert rows successfully.